Welcome to Jatai Scissor Fundamentals. In this introductory part of the course, we're going to go over all the different types of scissors that we're going to use, and also how to hold and get the most performance from each scissor. So let's get started. So let's start with the Tokyo Scissor. The Tokyo Scissor has a convex blade, and it's made of VG10 stainless steel. It has a straight handle. Also, the finger rest is removable. It's offset and comes in two different sizes, five and a half and six inch. The next scissor is the Osaka. Osaka also comes in two different sizes, the five and a half and the six inch. The thing you'll notice about this, it also has a convex blade and it's made of VG10 stainless steel, but the handle is molded so it's much more comfortable for some people in their hand and also the finger rest is not removable, it's molded in. So it conforms to your finger more comfortably. It's also semi-offset, so it's not as offset as the Tokyo, but it's still slightly offset. Next is the Kyoto. The Kyoto is the most refined scissor that Jatai makes. It has an adjustable tension screw and it has a removable finger rest. It also has a semi-offset handle and the handle is ergonomically molded to fit your fingers and be more comfortable. Next but not least is my favorite, the Tokyo Thinning Scissor. Now the Tokyo Thinning Scissor has 29 teeth. It removes about 30% of the hair with each scissor stroke. Each tooth has three little teeth so it makes it very very soft with each cut so you don't see a, a step from the tooth. So you can hit it multiple times and have a very very soft kind of blend. It has two detachable finger rests so you can use this both ways cutting blade on the bottom or cutting blade on the top and it gives you a slightly different effect each way which we'll explain later. It also has an adjustable tension screw so you can really fine tune in the tension to where it's perfect for the scissor. Alright so the next thing I want to kind of cover here is how to properly hold your scissors so you get the best performance and also it makes it as easy on your body as possible. The first thing is when I hold the scissor in my hand, right? I put it, the ring in my ring finger and I want to put it anywhere between the second knuckle and the third knuckle. Anywhere you want between there. The part here, the handle, I want to go anywhere between the second knuckle and the first knuckle. So it's either going to be at a 90 degree to my first finger or it will come back towards this knuckle and create an angle coming back towards my thumb. So anywhere in between here that you find comfortable is fine. I tend to hold it deeper in my hand, especially when I'm doing any kind of scissor over comb work. So from here, I'll take my thumb and just the corner of my thumb is going to fit into the ring and you'll notice that I start to push the ring away from my palm. So that creates tension on the scissor. I only put my thumb just in the little bit of in the crotch of that ring and I only move my thumb. When now when I hold this up, I keep my wrist straight, I keep my elbow bent, and I have my hand come up, and as I place the blade on my finger to cut, I only move one blade, and that gives me a solid stationary blade to cut against. So it makes it easier for me to repeat exactly how I'm going to be cutting. Now with the thinning scissor, the great thing about the thinning scissor is that you've got tangs on both sides. So this is the cutting blade, and then this is the, the thinning blade. So whichever way that the cutting blade is positioned is the way that the hair is going to flow. If I do the cutting blade vertically on the left side, then that's the way the hair is going to want to move. If I have the cutting blade on the right side, that's the way the hair is going to move. Cutting blade on top exposes the texture more. Cutting blade underneath hides it. Left moves left, right moves right. So I have a lot more versatility with this than if I only had one tang and it was one position use only. Let's move on to the technical aspect of the training. That's going to be where I show you to get the best performance out of the scissors, how to improve your technical skills, and how to make your hair cutting better overall. I'll see you in the next one.